things that inspire me to be more involved in food it's the need for doing something that I actually have passion and love. Uh, the creativity of what can be, there's no limits or anything on food. Uh, so today we're gonna make a not so traditional with a little Christian twist good old watermelon salad with feta and cucumbers. I've uh, been here probably like over 20 plus years. I uh, live in Tampa, Florida, my hometown. I call it my hometown because I grew up there for 12 years. I uh, moved to Orlando and then from Orlando, from the sunny sunshine state, I decided to move to Washington, D.C. I work at first Michelin star restaurant. I was like, this is like the Oscars on the restaurants. I'm like super nervous. I learned so much. I met so many incredible people, different cultures, different elements, different languages. Like talking to a French person or to like a person, you know, uh, from Asia and they have like zero English. And like, I'm like, okay, you know what? We're going to talk with food. Food's going to be our best communication channel and through family meals through like the specials, through like actually me taking my five minutes and learning a couple words, or like learning a couple like, hey, tell me some ingredients that are from your country. And I'm gonna show you something from my country and then maybe we can do a collab and then put something together. Mavis. Things that I learned, you know, from different cultures uh, are the ability of connect through food. Language barrier age barrier, sex, race, or everything, that can be on one side. The emotions and the ability of connect through food, it's something that's gonna make us really break through those barriers. I'm from South America, I'm from Peru, but I love Middle Eastern food. I love the spiciness, I love the spices, I love the culture. I've never been to their areas, but it's something that I actually like because when I was working in DC, I was able to work with people from those areas. I was able to like learn from the chef, you know, like he was very into the cuisine. But at the same time, you know, I was like able to foster and learn those into my cooks. A lot of people, you know, they wanted to like be involved into like the newest trend, involved into like, you know what? I wanna eat Italian. Well, there's more about Italian cuisine that you know, than just making pastas and dough and a sauce, you know, there's like, you know, different ingredients that you can play around. And connect that with like what's in season. For, for me, that's where I love about it, being a chef. And then I work <clears throat> also at Fiola, which was my first one Michelin star restaurant. And for me, having those awards were something great because it's kind of like, Kudos, all your hard work. You work like your 12, 14, 16 hours, your six days and so and so, we're paying off. But at the same time, I want to like make sure myself and the people that I was working with have what everybody calls a life balance. Because you don't have to sacrifice everything to gain something. You will gain something by doing something unique. And for me, it's having the liberty and exposure of eating well, taking care of your body, taking care of your team, and always have fun. No matter what you're doing, just doing it with a good intention. So I ended in Charlotte because uh, at that time, you know, in Washington DC, I was dating, uh, who is my wife. And then, so she had family here in Charlotte. And again, it's about, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. And every single person that is here that I'm involved, it's a foodie. They have a small restaurant, or they actually like to go out to eat very often. And they're pretty much open. So I love it. I have a fun time here. And the city is beautiful, great weather. The city is clean and the food, it's gonna be the next food hub in the next couple of years, couple of months, but I know it's gonna happen. And it starts with us being open-minded. Things that are missing are, first of all, people that are investing their time, people that are investing their knowledge into the food. 
like pairing up and you know communicating you know with like uh sponsors so like people that work in different areas like you know like fresh list or going to the first uh farmer's market and, like having the ability to actually start getting the knowledge directly from like what's the food i'm a chef you know like i'm very progressive in my cuisine so right now you know it's the summer so you want to make sure you're cooking something that is absolutely delicious and it's on season tomatoes are great figs are delicious peaches watermelons and so and so going into the fall so if you are a chef you want to make sure you know if you don't know exactly what's coming having a chat with anybody else you know having a chat with the farmer having a chat with a cook and that's going to help you to be creative there's a need also on investments because rent is expensive so open up a restaurant that have those abilities it's gonna be really a challenge but everything will take place at the right time and uh, right now i see charlotte it's going not just charlotte the carolinas you know because you also got great restaurants and great chefs that are doing things you know in riley and so and so like south carolina you know they have great restaurants and great chefs open up so it's going to happen and believe that cooking local for me as a chef make something very unique and open up my creativity like making something that a lot of people think you know it's very traditional or very boring you can find things you know by doing a little bit of homework or like doing a little test best person to do it yourself test something that you are thinking that might taste good but you don't know until you try one of the biggest things, you know, people go to the grocery stores, they get the beautiful tomatoes, the beautiful round, bright orange oranges and citrus and so and so. But a lot of people don't think or don't understand or don't know that being a farmer, it's really challenging. It's not that like you can clock in, clock out, you can get some overtime hours, you get, you know, like your PTO, you don't want to work this week and whatever you have to be constantly in the land you can get rain you can get acres destroyed you can get pests you can get rodents you can get etc and their life and their intentions so the farmers are into the food that's in your shelf you're not gonna get the perfect tomato at the farm because they're not producing that they're producing their life living into like the whole entire acres. You might have the one beautiful tomato, but you have to think about it. Then just having that, it's just more than just one thing on the shelf. There's a lot of intention, there's a lot of uh, energy, there's a lot of love and caring for that tomato to be in the shelf. The backbone is us as a chefs, we are responsible to translate that through our food not just charging an X amount of money into a plate for something that's gonna look cute, but it's for something that's gonna be able to like pay for somebody's living for myself and then for the team. So having that connection, it's very, very important. And then for me, cooking with intentions, respecting the food that the farmers are sacrificing, it's something that's very unique for me, close to me. There's multiple ingredients that I've been also excited from fresh list, which are like the little tiny herbs. A lot of people always put flowers and micro uh, microgreens on the plate because they want to look cute and looking beautiful. Nothing wrong. I do respect whoever does that. For me, it's about having something that has something different. Like there's different herbs that they sell by the ounces, like rau rau, like pow pow, like kilkenya, and those like words so like you know different herbs like not too many people are familiarized but you can get those try it and again just get out your comfort zone you know if you got good intentions loving what you're doing just do it go ahead and do it try working at Supperland and working with uh, the, the owners Jeff and Jamie it's really marvelous uh, they're really like nice people to work they listen they have great ideas and they're very open and when it comes to the creativity the chef team at Supperland they're really talented really young humble and they are really excited and like now with me as addition of Dan 
Uh, it's just about like every week we got, hey, what are we cooking next week? What are we cooking next week? What are we doing next week? And we always question and we always like, you know, asking around, hey, tomatoes are like coming in or hey, do you see the fresh list? You know, they got uh, sort of uh, this like especially uh, squashes coming. What are we doing? What are we doing? We always asking around. We like joke around, you know, uh, but it's just the energy and the positivity is there. And I cannot find a best place right now to work working. And we have the beautiful grill and like cooking, cooking with the, the wood fire, the embers. It's like and take it, the food into a next step. And then that's something that I'm very close to and I love it. My advice for the youth, and it doesn't have to be the youth. Anybody that wants to like happen into being a chef or working to the industry, there is going to be a lot of time before you go to the next step, before you even call yourself an executive chef or anything. Just want to make sure you know you are knowledge of that will take some time. It's not going to happen overnight. Just go with a good intention of have passion, love, smile on your face because that's going to be projected and that's just going to floral everything around. And just have fun. Just have fun. Just get out of your comfort zone and just go and do it. Do it. Don't do it for the fame. Don't do it for the awards. Just do it because you want to do something that's going to make somebody going out to a dinner and do the knob. For me, every time I see the knob, I see like the little people, the happy dancing inside, the inner child, they're like, ooh, I'm having something spicy or something sweet, or like, you know what? I never like to eat this kind of food, but it's actually, it actually tastes really good. That's bomb. And for me, that's just pay off more than anything else. That's a very gratitude. Makes my heart smile, makes me happy, and makes the community excited about food in general. Mm -hmm. The reason why I like to cook, it's because I like to share a memory. I like to make sure that everybody that goes out to the diner, everybody that goes out for eat, they have a good memory, a good experience. That goes in both the front of the house and the back of the house. And then for me, I wanna make sure that people that are working here people that are working with me are not just a number. The people that I just go out to eat are not just filling out their stomachs or just like getting their money back. For me, it's about, you know what? I make a happy moment and the food actually helped me to make that. This dish, this food, this ingredient was able to make me happy. And we make a whole entire dining room full of happiness we send happiness to the world, and we're living in a beautiful country, in a beautiful world, and surrounded with like positive energy, and the reward is just having those people coming back, and they just give you a high five, or like actually telling people like, hey, come to this restaurant, they're using this item, so the chefs, you know, the team is like very nice, very awesome. You will have a good time. That's why it's for me. And here we go. Not so traditional watermelon salad, smoked feta, black line yogurt, pao pao herbs. <laughs>